this is your lesson um, 4.3 on uh, logarithmic functions and their graphs. If you feel really strong, because this is, I'm teaching it as if you've never seen logarithms. Um, but some of you might remember them from Algebra 2. And if so, just go straight to your homework and you could try the homework, the handout, and see if you understand all of them. If you're not quite sure what's going on, you really should come back and watch this video. Okay, here we go. So logarithmic functions and their graphs. So first of all, what are logarithmic functions? And it's how we undo exponential functions. To do that, the way that I like to teach this is to talk about a game that we're going to play. And the game that we're going to play is, what's my exponent? So we're going to play a game, and here we go with the game. The first round of the game tells us something, and it tells us that we're playing the game of twos. So we're using the number two. And we get the value. So my question, because you're playing the game, is, what's my exponent? So you're looking at this two and saying, how do I get the value of eight? using twos and thinking about exponentially. So I'm thinking two to the what is eight? Well, the answer there would be three. So that was playing the game, what's my exponent? That was round one. Here comes round two. This time the game is the game of threes. And the value that we're interested in is 81. So you're ready? Here we go, let's play the game, what's my exponent? So in your brain, you're thinking, oh, that's 3 to the what power is 81? And you go, oh, that's to the fourth power. And that is the answer. All right, so let's do a few more of these. We're playing the game of tens, and our value is 1 million. What's my exponent? Well, 10 to the what is a million, and that answer is 6. The game of tens again, another round. This time our value is 100. What's my exponent? Well, that one's pretty quick one because we know that two, 10 to the second is 100. But what about this one? It's a game of tens, and the value is 0 0.001. What's my exponent? This might take a little bit more thinking. We're thinking, oh, 10 to the what power is 0 0.001? Well, then I have to think about 0 0.001 as 1 1,000th, which means it's 10 to the negative 3. So... What's my exponent? My exponent is negative three, okay? So this is playing the game, what's my exponent? The game starts off with where I give you the, the what base we're talking about. And then I give you a value. Well, the value is we have a base and we have a, that has a value, and then I'm asking you for what's my exponent? So this is what you're thinking to play the game, that base, with that value, what's the exponent that would go here? But we want to phrase this as a question. This is a statement. This is, this is telling you how do you find the value. You do a base to an exponent, and that's how you find the value. I want to phrase it as a question where it equals exponent. So instead of equaling value, I want it to equal exponent because, again, this is could be said as a, that it's a question. If I don't have the part that says value, I'm saying base to the exponent is what value? So that's a question. So this one here, I wanted to say, well, how would I find the, the exponent? How would I rearrange these values? That's when we say, oh, that game, what's my exponent, is actually the game of logarithms. That's the name of the game. And instead of writing logarithm, which is a long, long word to write and kind of cumbersome to say, we simplify it and we say log. We, you are allowed to just say log instead of logarithm. We, just, we can say log. And the log or the logarithm is the phrase, what's my exponent? So when I say this, I'm saying, what's my exponent when, my, when I give a base and a value? So what's my exponent when this is the base and this is the value? So when we do this, we return with the answer of, here's your exponent. So in this one, I'm playing the game of twos where my value is eight. So I'm saying, what's my exponent when two is the base and eight is the value? And the answer is three. So these are what logarithms are. They're answering the question, what's my exponent? 
we typically don't think in logarithmic form. We think in exponential form. So we have to be able to go back and forth either way from exponential to logarithm and logarithm to exponential. When I give you something in exponential form, I'd want us to be able to write it logarithmically. The exponent is 4, the base is 10, the value is 10,000. So if I'm writing this in logarithmic form, I'm going to say log, and then the base, which in this case is 10, and then the value. Remember, the value is what the exponential equals. And this is saying, what's my exponent? So it's going to equal 4. Um, this 10, base 10, is known as the common base. Because we, as human beings, we have 10 digits, our fingers, 10 digits, 10 toes. We use 10 symbols to write all of our numbers. Um, all, every number that we have, except for our transcendentals, are written using just these 10 uh, digits. And so that is known as our common base. It is so common that we don't write the number 10 anymore. We don't need it. We just write log. And we say, when we look at this, I still say log base 10. I don't say log of, I just say log base 10 of 10,000. Okay? It implies that it's base 10 because it's so common. It's like with the square root how we don't write the index. Okay? So here I've got an exponential form. I'm going to write it in logarithmic form. I don't have to write base 10, but I still am going to say it. And so I'm saying log base 10 of the value 0 0.1 is equal to the exponent negative 1. Here I've got base 10, exponent 7, and I've got 10 million. So log base 10 of 10 million has an exponent of 7. Base 10 raised to the x equals 25. Well, that's saying log base 10 of 25 has an exponent of x. Now, for this one in particular, we don't know what that is. This would require us to use a calculator. So we could pull out our calculator, and we type in using the log button, which we can see right there, the log button, log of 25, and you hit Enter, and you're going to get a decimal. It's going to be a long decimal. When you write it down, I would round it to three decimal places, 1.398. We can check this by going over to the exponential and typing in our calculator, 10 to the, now I have a lot more than just the three decimals here. I did as many as I could. And you'll see that it's not exactly two, but it definitely, uh, it doesn't, it's not exactly 25, but it does round to 25. Okay. We're going to do another um, group here of exponential form and logarithmic, but this time we're going to write them logarithmically and then see how they come out exponentially. So here it says log base 12 of x equals 2. Remember that this side over here is the exponent. We've got our base, our exponent, and our value. So we have our base and our exponent, and the value is x. We could simply just do 12 squared, which is 144, and we would solve this logarithmic equation. So by taking it from logarithmic form and putting it in exponential form, we can understand better how to do the problem. Here's another logarithmic. It says log base 2 of 12 equals x. Well, that's 2 to the x equals 12. Now, this one we can't do um, ourselves. With two, 2 to the a power, we can't go, oh, 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 equals 12. It doesn't. So we are in need of using this logarithmic function on our calculator. Again, this one has no numbers. It's just understanding the placement of each one of these. We've got base, we've got value, we've got exponent. So remember, base x, exponent z, and it equals the value of y. Now here's an exponential form that we talked about, this, this natural number, e to the 7. And we know how to find that on our calculator. We could do e to the 7. How would I write that logarithmically, though? Well, we have log base e, the natural number, and we have the value is x and the exponent is 7. But similar to base 10, we have a different way of writing this. This is not the common base. This is the natural base. 
So we have natural number exponentials. We have a natural logarithm, and there's a special way we write that. The natural log is written just ln. Now, you don't have to write capital L. You could write lowercase l. A lot of times you'll see people write it where they'll write ln like that, okay? Um, so it's the natural log, and then we say of, meaning we had to put the value. In this case, our, our value was x, and it equaled 7. So this is how I would write this exponential um, equation in its logarithmic form. Now, remember that on the calculator, um, we have just two buttons for logarithms. We have a button here that says log and a button here that says ln. And the log button right there is log base 10 always. It's, that's the only base that button is for. And we also have the ln button, which remember is the natural log, log base e. Those are the only two buttons we have. There's other features on our calculator. I don't want us using those right now, though. I want us just to concentrate on these two buttons because using these two buttons is the most efficient way to do a problem. The problem, though, is how do you do this on your calculator? This is log base 9. It's not one of these two buttons. And I don't want to use other features. There are features under the math um, key, but I want us to just using these two. And that is something called the change of base formula. And the change of base formula says when you have log of some base and its argument here, which is the value, the thing we plug into the logarithm, we can change this to any base we want. Well, the only two bases I'm really interested in is log base 10 or log base e. So I'm going to rewrite it with base 10s, and I'm going to say, oh, it's log base 10 of the original value, a, divided by log base 10 of the old base. Do not confuse this with log of a divided by b. It is not the same thing. This is log base 10 of a divided by log base 10 of b. Now, if we didn't want to use the log button, meaning log base 10, we could use the ln button, or the natural log, and we could do the same thing and say, oh, it's ln of a divided by ln of b. So I did that on my calculator, and you'll see here, I did log base 10 of 27, which was my, uh, my value, and I divided by log base 10 of 9, which was my old base, and I got 1.5. And then I also did it with the ln button, and I did ln of the value 27 divided by ln of the old base, and I got 1.5. Now, this particular problem I did not need my calculator for because I can, this change of base formula allows me to change to any base I want. And I notice the numbers 9 and 27 are both what are called base 3 numbers, meaning they are both powers of 3. So I'm going to change my base to base 3. So instead of log base 9 of 27, I'm going to write log base 3 of 27 divided by log base 3 of 9. And this question, which is what's my exponent, says 3 to the what power is 27. Well, that's 3. And this one down here is 3 to the what power is 9, which is 2. And 3 divided by 2 is 1.5, exactly what we got on the calculator. All right, second part of this lesson. This is, this is the end of what's my exponent, understanding logarithms. The second part of our lesson is about graphing logarithms. And in graphing logarithms, remember, we're undoing exponential functions. They're inverse functions. And if we recall, inverse functions is this whole concept of switching your x's and y's, switching your inputs and outputs. So here I have a function, and we have an input of x. And that input into this function, which is the exponential function, is an exponent. I just picked base 10. You could have any base you want, but I'm just saying when you, what you plug in to an exponential function is your exponent. That's your input. Now, this input that we have here is the same thing as the output for the logarithm because, remember, log base 10 of x is saying, what's my exponent? Well, that was the exponent here. So this means, this log of base 10 of x for this function means find my exponent 
an exponent, the word, I want you to concentrate on the word, the exponent is the output for logarithm. The exponent is the input for, in, uh, for um, exponential, and the exponent is output for logarithms. Similarly, when you plug in an exponent into an exponential function, you get a value. What comes out is the value, that's the output. But value is what we plug into a logarithmic function. So the input for the exponential is the output for the logarithm. The output for the exponential is the input for the logarithm. That also means that our set of domain and ranges switches. So if I find the domain of this f of x, this exponential function, I find all the possible um, inputs, and I find the range for this function, to find the domain and range of logarithms is simply to think exponentially, but switch. So if the domain of f is a, then the range of the uh, logarithm is a. And if the range of the exponential is b, then the domain of the logarithm is b. Every single x and y switches. The words input, output switch. Your x's and y's switch. Your domain and range switch. Your asymptotes switch. Everything switches. When we look at data, meaning a t-table, let's look at two, t, uh, two basic t-tables, no numbers, just letters in them. So we have this, fun this exponential function that is some b to the x. We have some logarithmic function, which is log base b of x. The inputs for our exponential, we're going to pick our, no our standard ones, which is negative 1, 0, and 1. These are the inputs for the exponential, so they will be the outputs for the logarithm. We can quickly think exponentially and say, well, b to the negative 1 is 1 over b, b to the 0 is 1, and b to the 1 is b. So we have our outputs for exponential, and the outputs for our exponential are the inputs for our logarithm. Now we're going to graph these on a graph, and even though there's no numbers, it's okay. We're, we are talking about where our base is greater than 1 for this example. I'm not putting actual numbers on the x-axis, I mean, excuse me, on the y-axis. The x-axis, I do have numbers because my inputs were numbers. But for the y-axis, I have to have these letters, 1 over b, 1, and b. And when b is greater than 1, then I know that 1 over b is less than 1, and I know that b is greater than 1. So that's what I have here. I don't know what numbers they are, I just know that if my base is greater than 1. I'm going to graph those points. And then don't forget your asymptote. And then I gently connect those points and I write my exponential curve. I'm going to do the same thing logarithmically. I have this x and y, my, my horizontal and vertical. But the numbers negative 1 and negative 1, 0, and 1, they go on this vertical axis. Because that's the log base b of x axis. And the numbers 1 over b, 1, and b go on this axis, this y-axis, actually, this x-axis here, because um, they are the inputs for the logarithm. And it's the same idea that I know that b is greater than 1, so I know that 1 over b is less than 1, and it's all positive. I have my numbers on my vertical axes. I'm going to graph these points. At 1 over b, I go down to negative 1. At 1, uh, actually, at 1, I'm 0. And at B, I go up to 1. I gently connect those points, and I have my curve. Don't forget this asymptote. The asymptote for the exponential was the x-axis. The asymptote for the logarithm is the y-axis. Now, if I were to superimpose, pick this graph up, and put it over here, we would notice something about it, and that is that they are reflections over the line y equals x because... They are inverses of each other. They are a transformation that switches all the x values with the y values. So, here is a parent function, log base b of x. 
whatever, the, and this is for a case where B is greater than zero that we're looking at. We need to let, uh, recognize here that our domain is all of my X's for this parent function are greater than zero because you can't have a value in my logarithm. I can't have any values that are negative. Okay, so I have no negative x values, no negative inputs, no negative values that go into logarithm. Our range, well, it's going to go all the way down and all the way up. It's got all real numbers. Now, these are the switch of exponentially. Exponentially, we would have said the domain is all real numbers and the range are positive values. It has an x-intercept. And the x-intercept is always the point 1, 0. For exponential, we had an intercept that was the y-intercept that was 0, 1. The y-intercept, it doesn't ever cross that. That is an asymptote. It is, um, there's no intercepts. Is it increasing or decreasing? Well, this function we're looking at right now, it's increasing. Why is it increasing? It's increasing everywhere. It's increasing because my base is greater than 1. That's the same as we thought of for exponential. When our base was greater than 1, our exponential was exponential growth. When our base is greater than 1, then our logarithm is always increasing. But when our base is between 0 and 1, when it was exponential, it would have been exponential decay, it would be decreasing. And the same thing holds true with logarithms. Instead of being an increasing logarithm, now look carefully at this graph. We're going to see, uh, we, I put the points in there, and here it comes. Oh, there it is. There's my decreasing logarithmic graph. Okay? So, Um, logarithms have been transformed. We have two different ways we can look at these. When we're talking about transformations, we could also be multiplying the output out here. I'm just going to talk about horizontal and vertical shifts. And the horizontal and vertical, just like we've done with other functions, we're subtracting from our x and we're adding at the end of the statement for our vertical. Um, the, one of the ways we can do this is we're going to move the, the whole axes over h and up k or the horizontal h direct, um, number of units and the vertical k number of units. So let's look at log base 2. And we, we'll graph it, and there it is. There's log base 2. But what if I transform it? And here's a transformation of that same function. This is telling me I want to move two units to the right and one unit up. My hk is 2, 1. This is not a vertex. This is just telling me how to move it. So... I start off here, and instead of moving the function, this curve, I'm going to move my x and y axes. I'm going to start with the origin. So I'm going to take this origin right here, and I'm going to move it two units to the right and one unit up and put a fake origin in my grid. So there it is. I didn't like gray. I'm going to erase it in a minute. And now I pretend that this right here is my x and y axes of log base 2, since that was the parent function. And so just like I did over here, I have my points and my asymptote, and I do that and I graph it. Now I need to get rid of the fake axes because that's not what it is. Here it is. This now shows the transformation of log base 2 over 2 units and up 1. And this was done by moving the axes of the, the origin. Okay. We have a second way we could do this, and that is Take the, the function we have here and take each of the points we have in the graph. You must have actual points, though, to do this. And you move each point over h and up k. So I take this point here, move it over h and up k, put a dot. Move the next one over h and up k. I went over 2 and up 1. And lastly, I went over 2 and up 1 for that last point. And now, using those points, I make my gentle I, I'm sorry, I move, I move the asymptote also because uh, <clears throat> I have to move it over to an up one. And now I'm going to make the curve, and there it is. So that is a transformation of a logarithm. All right. 
The following pages that uh, you should be given out by the uh, sub are classwork and homework practice problems. I want you to do them and post them to Google Classroom. So you have problems where you're going to uh, write each equation in exponential form. You're going to write them in logarithmic form. You're going to evaluate. Don't use your calculator. These are to evaluate without a calculator as best you can. Um, then here are ones where you're going to have to use change of base and try to use that. To figure it out, you'll end up using your calculator for these. Uh, and then you've got some graphing, four graphing problems to do. All right, that's the end of your lesson.